And I see people. I, I, I see people. I see live people. I see people. <laughs> I see people instead of looking in the living room, y'all. Brought us out the house. Let me see. Do I have no shoes? I got shoes on today. I had to put on some clothes. I didn't know I gained a little weight. I'm a little tight in there. But, you know, I didn't have my favorite uh, the things on, you know, the, the thing that I can stretch out in. But yeah, God bring you out so don't get too comfortable, boy. You got to go back out there. So amen. This is a blessing to see you all and uh, to break, well, to break spiritual bread. Let's put it like that, huh? Just to get a hug, amen. To, to, to see you all's faces. So I thank God for this time. So God is good. And we got some liquid sunshine. And uh, that's always good, isn't it? Especially in California. We get a little rain, we get a little sun. Uh, some people say we got too much uh, liquid sunshine, but liquid sunshine is better than a liquid shoe shine. You ever see, you ever used to shine your shoes with that liquid stuff? Never worked right. Liquid, Brother Ron know what I'm talking about, he was in the military. But we got some liquid sunshine, and even more importantly, we have the sun. Yes, only in shining in our hearts, and that's the best thing of all. Amen. So let's do this. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we will see what he has for us. Father, we thank you for this time. I thank you, Lord, for your, your faithfulness. I thank you, Lord, for your, your love. And I just ask you to be with us, Lord, as I impart this word uh, to all who will hear it. Let hearts and minds be open to it. Let our ears uh, absorb it, Lord, and let our hearts resonate in it. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Praise God. Today's sermon is, a, is another series. I can tell you that. I like to tell you what I know. Sometimes I don't know, but I know this will be a series. And the series is called Behavior According to Our Savior. Behavior According to Our Savior. And this will be part one. And this is going to be like the introduction of this series, and uh, the lessons that will follow from this are lessons to teach and remind us about our behavior as human beings, amen? How many of you know that people really do need to consider and talk about behavior? Mm -hmm. We need to be talking about our behavior as human beings, y'all. Mm -hmm. And when I say talk about behavior, I don't mean be gossiping about our behavior. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Okay? No. I mean, there needs to be some frank discussion and learning concerning the conduct and behavior of people in the world today. We're not separating ourselves from people. We're all folks. So it includes all of us. Because much that is going on in people's behavior today has, has happened because we're straying. We're straying, Lord. We're straying from the Lord. And uh, some of the things that, that we consider... Uh, acceptable certainly is not acceptable to the Lord. That's what I'm trying to say, okay? Uh, some of the behavior that we've accepted and that we're prone to, uh, we can't call righteous and godly. And this is because, uh, by and large, uh, many, of, uh, many people's uh, behavior <clears throat> is based primarily on man's standards. Our behavior is basically predicated upon our standards instead of being lined up with God's standards, okay? Anyone should be able to see that. It's a fact that, in general, people's ideas and behaviors are man-centered. We're seeing that in these days. Man-centered behavior and not God-centered behavior. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even in the church. We'll talk about that later. And I think we can agree that as people tend to conduct uh, uh, themselves and behave and we, as we behave in our own, uh, our own uh, uh, natural man behavior, or natural woman behavior, okay? The Bible said, gives us a, a thought on, on the natural man. And I'm going to ask Pastor Annalisa if she's ready to read that for us. The first Corinthians 2.14. You all know this, but there are some people that may not have heard it. Read that for us. 1 Corinthians 2.14 tells us this. Tell us about the natural man. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says about the natural man. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. 
nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. All right, thank you, Pastor. That's a natural, that's what I'm alluding to when I say a natural man's concept or a natural woman's concept. The natural man or the natural woman does not understand the things of the Spirit of God. All right, <clears throat> that's just how it goes. As a matter of fact, we come into this world, we come into this world at birth, uh, already equipped with our own mindsets. Did you know that? We come in at birth wanting to have things our way. All right? If you've ever uh, studied or seen a, a, a newborn baby, uh, uh, an infant, okay? They can't even speak. But boy, do they know how to holler. <laughs> boy, do they know how to get your attention. And they know how to let you know, right? Uh, when their desires are not being met, when their needs are not met. They will let you know. That's an innate thing, you all. It's also for survival, I will say that. But also, uh, uh, it goes much deeper than that. And once these little human beings start forming and they get a little teeth in their mouth, maybe one or two sometimes, in different places, or they, they start learning how to uh, talk, one of the first words they know is no. <laughs> right? And you tell them something, they say, no! You know, and they know how to say no. You know? That's, uh, that's sort of how it is. Okay? Even when, you, when you've told them to do something and they don't want to do it, they'll say no. Because it doesn't agree with their mindset. You see? That's just a sign of a, of a bigger problem that plagues mankind. Now, I love babies. I love children. I love people. But we have to admit that we have some issues to work on. We want things our way and we, be, we behave accordingly. Apart from the Lord, how can we get ourselves right? That's the question. And the reason for that is because we all are born into sin and each of us have a sin nature. That's right. That's right. Am, I, am I right? That's right yeah. Now, we don't like to say it, but it's true. We didn't call this shot. This is, this, is, this is the hand that was dealt to us when we got here, you all. That's the way it is. You could say that we come ready rolled in sin. We come ready rolled in sin. Therefore, it's, it's common for human beings to operate in sinful activity and behavior apart from the Lord. I'm sure you've all heard that phrase, go for what you know. That's what we do. That's the, the tendency that the natural man has, or the natural woman, it's imbued in us. We're going to go for what we know, what's in it for me, how do I feel about it. There may be some consequences, but I'm going to get all I can, while I can, and how I can. That's sort of how it is in some instances. And I'm saying that there, and I'm using a generality, but a fact uh, concerning human beings. We have a tendency to go for what we know, even if we know it isn't right. Think about that. Because of that sin nature, we're liable to go for it anyway. All right? Think about politicians. We know it's wrong. We know we're lying. Let's say it anyway. Let's push it through now. We'll worry about it later on. Huh? I can't afford to sign with this person or that person because I might lose my position. See, yeah. I got to go for what I know. See, if we apply this, uh, uh, this phrase to their actions, we understand, okay? Not just politicians. I don't want to pick on anybody. I'm just spreading around. Look, look at the drug, the drug industry. Look at the prescription drug industry. Look at Big Pharma. Even when they know it's wrong. Don't push it in anyway, you all. That's the nature. It's like that old Nike slogan, let's just do it. Okay? Let's do it. So that's sort of how it is. And let me ask Pastor Anthony to take us to the, the Word of God and, and compare this to the Bible. See what it says in Romans 3.10-12, please. Romans 3.10-12 tells us this. It says, it is written. Huh? It is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. None who seeks after God on our own. On our own. In our own man-centered uh, mindset. Go ahead. They have all turned aside. 
They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good, no, not one. All right. Thank you, Pastor. You see, that's, that's, that's not, that doesn't sound good. Doesn't make you all warm and fuzzy. You know, it makes you think, what kind of a world is this? You know, can this be true? Well, that's what the Bible says. And uh, uh, the apostle is informing us that, that uh, uh, that's how it is. Humankind, um, humankind, and that means all kinds, all right? That means all of us. All people are under the weight and under the cloud of sin. We know about 1 John 5, 19. I quoted that one enough. You all know what it is. Y'all should be able to spout that one back to me right now. But we, we, are little, we are children of God, but the whole world lies in the sway, no? Lies in the sway of the wicked one. Amen? As I've said many times before, it's, it's, it's just on you. This is just how it is. Look at what people do. The weight of sin. Look at how Russia can attack Ukraine like that. Now, I, don't get me wrong. I know that there's some end time prophecy going on around here. But still, God knew that these were going to be people that would attack you and that will wipe you out if you let them. God knew that power hungry despots and moguls will come out and kill innocent babies and children at the blink of an eye. And said, let's just go for it. Go for what we know. Amen? This is what I'm talking about. See, it gets worse. It's not just. Uh, the little babies. We start as infants, but boy, when we become full age, when sin becomes full grown, it produces death in a lot of different ways, okay? Now that brought me back to, uh, to James 1, 13 to 15, but I wasn't meaning to go there, but it means the same thing. We see the sin, the stain of sin. What about China? Just lying and spying. <laughs> spying and lying, lying and spying, huh? What about the U.S.? <laughs> Playing dumb. I know nothing. Well, yeah, we know it's more to it than that, okay? We try to turn into Colonel Clink when we act like we don't know that. You see what they did to me? It's like in a football game when somebody kick you and the second person hits them and they said foul on the second person, but they don't know the first person did something wrong. Mm -hmm. This is the mindset that we're in as human beings. I don't know if people call it that one. This is the mindset. Humankind under a cloud of sin. You know, I was talking to my son one day. You know, he's a big boy now. I remember when he was a baby. I mean, he didn't say no too much because he was scared. But I remember when he was a baby. <laughs> he's a big boy now. He's, he's a big man now. Okay. He saw me the other day and he said, why are you all bent over like that? <laughs> Why are you walking like that, man? What's wrong with you? That's what he's asking me. I said, because my back hurt. Okay. okay. I said, you just keep living, okay? <laughs> you saw Jim Brown. You saw Jim Brown. Be looking these days at you. When you've been through the rigors, okay? But I thank God. He talked about having Lisa's shoes. And <laughs> yeah, her hands look old. He just said anything that come out of his mouth. This that little boy, little baby that we took care of. I got old hands. What, what's an old hand? I never heard of such a thing. But, <laughs> but anyway. You said it looked like my mother's. <laughs> yeah. But one day, he, we had a talk, and he told me, <laughs> my son is funny. He's in the 40s now, but he told me he was driving to, through this wooded area. He came in a clearing, and he told me that uh, he smelled a strong, powerful odor. It was so powerful, it was a skunk. But he rode through a skunk cloud, I guess, and it messed him up. <laughs> that skunk cloud messed him up. He said, Dad, man, it got in my nose. My eyes were watering. I couldn't see. He said it was all in the car. He said, I turned on the wipers and the air conditioning. It got worse. He was going on and on. And he said uh, uh, his eyes were tearing up. You know, he, was, he had an allergy when he was little. So things like that might just make him swell up. You know, might make his head get bigger or something. So what happened was he said that he, uh, even after he drove out of the area, he said the smell was still with him. So he got his car. He washed it. That wasn't good enough. He got it detailed. People had to cover their mouth. It was all it was the noses. It was all it was so strong. 
He said that odor was still in the vehicle. He said the smell was in his nostrils. He was blowing his nose, couldn't get out. And I said, man, you sure you didn't run over Skyler the skunk and take him home with you? You sure he ain't up underneath you? <laughs> Old Skyler, he, he, he might be underneath the vehicle. He said, no, I would have known that. I said, well, he said, of course, I didn't run over. He said, it's just the way it was. I said, well, I guess so. And I think back now, I think back to that story. The reason I brought it up is because that's how it is with sin. Sin gets on you. Sin gets in you. Sin covers you. By yourself, you can't get clean. By ourselves, our attitudes become what we uh, walk in and what we do. By ourselves, okay? It's there, and it causes people to behave in sinful and ungodly ways. Amen. That's what it does when it gets on you. And it's transferable. You bring it in a room, and you bring it in your house, and you start doing it. It's like a mold. It's a thing just sort of spreading. You see what I mean? It grows, and you don't even know it's growing, okay? And uh, uh, we, we, we at least have to have the knowledge of how sin operates. And that's why the Lord has given us this, how, how it can become apparent in our lives and in our behavior. But our behavior has to be according to our Savior. That's what saves us. Amen. Amen. Let's go again to the Word and see what it says about this in uh, 1 John. Let's go to 1 John uh, chapter 1 and Pastor, take us to verses 8 to 10. 1 8. John 1, 8 to 10 tells us, if we say that we have no sin... We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. And 10, such a 10. Go and if we say that we have not sinned, mm -hmm. we, have, we make him a liar, him and lie. his word is not in us. All right. Thank you, Pastor. Very, very good. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Okay? And the truth is not in us. See, none of us can say we're not sinners or we, we don't sin. This word says we do. Don't you dare say you don't. Because <laughs> if you do, you're lying. Okay? That's what it says. But the thing is, and we could go on, we'll get to this later. We know that we do sin, but we're not to what? Practice sin. Mm -hmm. We don't look forward to it. If it comes on us because we drive through that sin cloud, okay? Uh, we want to make sure old Skyler ain't stuck on us, amen? Mm -hmm. But we want to make sure that we don't uh, do it purposely. We don't take it home with us, amen? Mm -hmm. We try not to do it again, amen? I like that. I'll admit, I was convicted. You know, we dropped off the equipment. There's nobody out there today. So I, I tried to, I saw the, 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 the sign that says handicapped, but all the stalls say handicapped. I know how it is. Some people... <laughs> I guess the, the, the city thinks everybody in the city is handicapped because sometimes you can't find nothing but a handicapped space. But I'm not making excuses. I bagged into the handicapped stall to unload on a Sunday. Okay? And I'm so glad. Brother, I, we unloaded the equipment and the car was sitting out there for just a few minutes. And Brother Andrew told me, Pastor, your car is in the handicap zone. See, Brother Andrew became... Uh, Officer Andrew, <laughs> <laughs> to let me know. And I hopped to it. I said, yes, Officer, I'm moving it right away. <laughs> and see, and, but that's good. See, that's good because you don't want to cause anybody to stumble, you know? And Andrew may go home and think about that, you know? He might tell someone, I saw old Pastor, he just drove up in there like he handicapped. He might say that, but I know he's not. <laughs> But I'm saying, this is what we have to think about. But for the grace of God, God leading us, we know and we try to do the right thing and do that thing, okay? But apart from the Lord, oh, we'll just do what we want. We'll park there and leave it there like people do, okay? So then I bring that up so that we can see that this scripture is saying, uh, if you sin, if you say you don't sin, or you don't have sin, or you're not going to do something, you deceive yourselves, okay? And the truth is not in you, okay? This word says, this is saying that uh, uh, 
Basically, it's saying, wake up and smell the coffee. That's how I interpret this scripture. Wake up, y'all. Wake up and smell the coffee. Okay? Use our little skunk example. We don't need to be running through uh, skunk clouds because if you do, it's going, it can overcome you. And this passage tells us, guess what? We can overcome sin, can't we? Can we overcome sin? Sure we can. We'll, we might still make a mistake. You might still do something wrong. But you repent and you don't go out with the intent to do that. Amen? That's what it's saying. I, I like that. I like it because the word is crystal clear when it comes to providing us with what we need in order to be rescued from the ravages of sin. That's what we want to do. We want to be rescued from that skunk smell. Amen? We want to be rescued from that. And, uh, it's as if the word says, yep, the word is telling us. The word is telling us. Sin has y'all messed up. Okay? Sin has messed y'all up. He said, but guess what? I'm going to dress y'all up. That's what the Lord does. He knows we're messed up, but we get dressed up in the Lord. The Lord, we get dirty and sin, and the Lord is the only one that can clean us up. Amen? And that's what he said. If you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you your sins. It says and cleanse you from what? All unrighteousness. Not some. Okay, not a little bit of unrighteousness. Not just that thing you do that your family know about. He, he'll clean you up from that thing you do in private. He'll do you, he'll, he'll clean you up from that thing you do away from the family, okay? He'll clean you up from those thoughts that they don't know you think about sometimes, how to get back at somebody. Thank you, Lord. Okay, now you just can't stand. So he'll clean you from all unrighteousness, okay? Oh, Jealousy and envy and covetousness. Huh. What they doing driving that kind of four by four? I don't have a one by four. And, 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 and he'll clean you. I don't have a tricycle. I, I'm on a, a moped motorbike, you know, and he's driving that. He'll clean you from all unrighteousness. <laughs> you know how people be thinking. You know, folks, are they look at you sometimes. You, know, you go back up. You wave and they go. <laughs> Don't want to get your head nod, let alone a, a, a dap. Come on, y'all. We'll be loving one another. But he says he'll cure you from all sin. Okay? And that's the good thing about it. That's what it's about, family. And the first thing to do, according to the scripture, is what? Confess your sins. Confess. Confess your sins. And let me be frank about that. Confess your sins to who? To the Lord. Okay? And understand this verse in 1 John. It's not telling you to go tell your business to some congregation. It ain't telling you that, y'all. You do it if you want to. Okay? I've seen that done before. I've seen people just tell all their business. <laughs> they thought it was going to help them. They told all their business. Okay, now this business just out there. <laughs> people just look at them now. I'm praying for you. <laughs> Just look at them. Everybody, people they don't know, say, oh, you, you go to the store and say, what church you from? I'm from Southern, but we pray for you. <laughs> How did it get to, <laughs> you know, that type of thing. You, you, you uh, confess your sins to God, not to your congregation of folks, not the Pope. Nope. That's a joke. Bring your problems to the Lord. Lord. Amen. He's the one that's really going to help you. Now, he might help you through people, and there are some things that you can confess that you need help with, but your oh, intimate God. things, the things between you and God that people don't know about, that's between you and the Lord. It says, confess the sin, your sins, and uh, he'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. After all, he's the God of creation. Amen? Amen. He's the God of creation. Um, yeah. Uh, in order to maintain, and, and why do you do it? We do it in order to, to be cleansed, but also to maintain proper uh, fellowship with God. Mm -hmm. That's why. You said, but wait a minute. Do I have to do that? Remember, we're talking about, in this series, about behavior according to our Savior. We'll get into that, but I'm just giving you an overview. But we want our behavior to be aligned with the Lord's ideas concerning proper behavior, right? If we don't know what that is, we need to commune with the Lord. We're talking about righteous behavior, all right? So it stands to reason that we need to be upfront 
And we need to be honest when we decide to en en enlist the aid of our Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? And uh, 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 the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because he's the one who's going to save us, and he saves us from sin. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. That's what he does. We always say being in Christ is, a, is not about religion. What's it about? A relationship. A relationship with the Lord. You all always say that. Pastor Annalisa said that. I hear, that her, I hear her in my sleep. She says this on the phone. She says it to her sister. She says it to all of you all, right? It's not about a uh, religion. It's about a relationship. If you give her 10 minutes. After the, uh, she's going to say that somewhere along the line, it's true. So these <laughs> verses in, in, in 1 John uh, 1, 8 to 10 make it crystal clear that, that by being honest and upfront in our broken and sinful states, humbly confessing our faults. Is it that what uh, Minister Dora reads in the uh, 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 covenant prayer? Amen. Uh, humbly confessing our faults concerning sin to the Lord because he's faithful to forgive us. Amen. 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 And the cleansing begins. Now, Thank you, Lord. and just so nobody out there is confused, because they might be thinking, well, wait a minute, we're saved. Don't we give, aren't we forgiven when we're saved? Absolutely. That's the issue of forgiveness. When you're saved or born again, you're forgiven, right? It doesn't say that he, he cast your, your sins as far as the east is from the west, right? Because you're saved and truly born again, for sure. When we accept Christ in genuine faith and belief, right? Uh, confessing that he is Lord, we are extended forgiveness. When do we get the forgiveness? At that very moment, amen? Okay, you got amnesty, you got, you've been forgiven for your sins. When the Lord came to me. He said, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I knew the hairs on your head before I formed the earth. He said, I have a plan for you and your wife. It starts right here and right now, but you must repent. repent your sins to me right now. That's what he said. I knew nothing about the Bible. How could that be that a voice is telling me to do this? Repent my sins to who? He said, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He told me who he, who he was. Then he told me I had to bow before him, and I couldn't even see him. Humble, humble. Humble myself before him. Now, when I said, okay, okay, and he, and he got those sins out of me, he got a few of them out. There was a lot in <laughs> I was 49. I lived my life. And Tooth fairy don't come when you're 49. But I was 49 at that time. <laughs> so I had a lot of sin. But he but he was showing me who he was. Some more later on. <laughs> and, and he said, You're gonna remember more. He said, every time you do, you must repent them to me, and you'll be forgiven. You see what I mean? So when I did that, he said, uh, when I repented, and I don't know how long we stood there and talked, but we stood there for a while, and, 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 I, and I repented, and I said, I repented. And he was bringing up stuff out of me, bringing up stuff out of me. Like I said, I was feeling lighter and lighter, okay? Thank you, Lord. And wait. <laughs> and uh, he was telling me these things. Then he said, now, now, son, I'm going to bless you. You're forgiven. I'm going to bless you, your wife. Your children's children's children and the people you love Amen. are going to be Amen. blessed. Amen. That's what he said. Now, start read my word from cover to cover. Then you don't understand. I'm going to reveal it to you. The Holy Spirit comes into you, like Jesus says. I'm sending you a helper. I'm saying all this to say I didn't know the Bible, and when that happened, I started doing just what he said, and he's been doing that ever since. Thank now you. I. Now he sends me places, he's teaching me, he sends me to school, he's sending me to this place, and I become a pastor, and I'm still learning as I go. But now, because you never stop learning the yeah. Word of God, you never stop uh, uh, gaining knowledge in the Word of God. It's the most uh, uh, overused yet underused book in the world, okay? It never gets old, never gets tired. You can use it over and over again and learn. So what I'm saying is that... Uh, this thing about fellowship and this thing about forgiveness. Yes, I got forgiveness right there on the spot. I was forgiven uh, for the things that I've done at that very time because of the position we each enter into as Christians. You are forgiven when you're saved. Now, but that is just one facet of forgiveness. You get what I'm saying? Uh, uh, 
That's automatic forgiveness. Okay? God lends, uh, uh, we, we confess our sins and we're forgiven because we believe in the Lord and he honors that. Okay? Uh, but we want relational forgiveness from the Lord as well, which is continuous, personal uh, forgiveness in the Lord. It's like we're all children in this house, Thank you, Lord. and we got a father and a mother, and they take care of us, and we go in and out the house, you go to school, you come back and you eat, you say, hi, mom, hi, dad, and you go out, and you know they're taking care of you. But this is the type of forgiveness that you come and you sit after your meal, and you sit with your mother, and you hold her hand, and you rub her arm, and you tell her how much you love her, and you, you sit with your father and you talk with him and you get this, this I don't want to call it added forgiveness, this bonus forgiveness, but you get this relational for, uh, 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 intimacy with your parents. You see what I mean? And that's what continues, the relational forgiveness. So this fellowship is required in our relationships with the Lord. You see what I mean? Fellowship, daily fellowship with the Lord. Okay? If not, we could say, I know enough Bible, I know enough scripture, I don't need the Lord. But the Lord wants more. He wants that relational intimacy with us. Amen? Amen. This is necessary. Uh-huh. I'll tell you where we're going with it. It's necessary if there's to be a recognized change in Christ's fault. If you want your behavior to change to the point that God know it should change, you should get with the Lord. Okay? You got to get with him. You can't be on no and, and on an island just you and yourself. You're going to receive some things from the Bible, but that intimate relationship with the Lord is what's needed. And that's why if you don't want to fall away, if you don't want to be stuck on an island wondering what's going on in my life, and sometimes your head becomes unclear, you're taken care of, but you seem like there's something missing in your life. It might be because of your relational disparity with the Lord. You see what I mean? If we want our attitudes to change, if we really want to see a change in our lives, sometimes you need uh, some some private tutorship, tutor, tutorship, okay? Is that right? Probably not. But you need a tutor, let me put it like that, okay? <laughs> and that, 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 that's what you need. You need, you need that, that if we want to recognize change. And rest assured, it'll show up in your behavior patterns. It'll show up in your behavior patterns, am I right? The more time you spend with the Lord, okay? And in light of this fact, consider what the word says in Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians 4. This is kind of long when you write here. I don't usually look at the whole part of it, but we're going to go to Ephesians 4. And Pastor, read verses 7, 17 to 24 for us, please. Ephesians 4, 17 to 24 tells us this. This I say, therefore, in testifying the Lord, mm -hmm. that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, mm -hmm. in the fertility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, mm -hmm. who, being past feeling, have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all and Go ahead. To work all in cleanness and with greediness. Okay, so let me just stop right there for a minute, please. But you see what it means. We shouldn't be walking as the Gentiles walk, as the rest of them walking. Futile in the mind, okay? In the futility of their mind, alienated from the life of God, okay? Because of the heart, the blindness, the deceitfulness of the heart, amen? And it's saying, past feeling. Man, they done got past feeling. They give themselves over to lewdness, to uncleanliness, to greediness. This is what we're talking about when we said uh, 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 the natural man. See how politicians and different people and the drug, and they, they're past feeling anything. You know, it's just, just, just the way it is when we don't commune with the Lord. Okay, go ahead, Pastor. And then verse 20, is that where mm -hmm. I stop? Uh, yes. But you have not so learned Christ. Come on. But you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard indeed him. you have heard him. And have been taught by him, 
as the truth is in Jesus, mm -hmm. that you put off concerning your former conduct, mm -hmm. the old man, mm -hmm. which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, mm -hmm. and be renewed, be renewed, be renewed in the spirit of your mind, mm -hmm. and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. See, I didn't want to have to go through all of that, but we needed to include these verses uh, together because in them, uh, um, what the Apostle Paul is talking about is explaining the parameters, the factors which take place as we undergo change from the old man to the new man, from the old woman to the new woman. Okay, we go from being steeped in sin and corruption according to the deceitful lust that they're talking about in verse 22. We put on the new man, amen, the new woman, if you will, okay, becoming renewed in the spirit of our minds. It's a mindset, okay? That's what we're talking about in verse 23 and verse 24. It describes putting on the new man which was created according to who? According to God in true righteousness and holiness. God is holy. That's what he's looking for, holy people. Okay? So when we look at our behavior, behavior according to our Savior, you get a clue as to how we should be behaving at all times, not sometimes. Amen? Amen? When we uh, opened up this series uh, a few minutes ago, I pointed out that the natural man or the natural woman's behavior is predicated upon a natural mindset. Amen. That's the problem. That's why people don't understand you when you're in the spirit, right? People don't don't get you. It's just some odd about you. Some, you know, they and the more uh, uh, you get into the word, the less you they understand you. Sometimes the less they want to understand you. Sometimes, okay. So, so that's what we're talking about here. And we see that as long as we cling to our own natural flesh-driven mindsets, our behaviors are going to reflect that. You can tell where a person is, just hang out with them for a while. Just listen to them for a while. Listen to their language when they get good and relaxed. <laughs> listen to their language, okay? You meet people in church, you meet them at the picnic, okay? Meet them at Safeway, okay? Meet them at the, uh, down the street, okay, at the, at the meet them at the, at the PTA meeting when, they, when they're mistreating the children. And who is that cursing like that? That's sister, sister, uh, sister, that's sister holy talking like that. <laughs> oh, me, that's not old. But this text tells us, teaches us that putting on the new man uh, requires a, it, it produces a shift, a change in our conduct, a change in our behavior, okay, which in turn coincides with aligning uh, according to God's standards, amen. Again, it's a mindset. It, 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 it teaches us to be lined up with Jesus. We could go to Philippians 2.5, but we'll talk about that some other time. But let's go to another vital text of Scripture, uh, demonstrating the importance of adjusting our behavior according to God's design standards. And this is actually our, uh, you might have this on your program. This is our memory verse for this series. So we're going to use this, but I want to use it. I want to pull it out right now. 1 Peter 1, verse 13 to 16. I'm going to ask Pastor Annalisa to just touch on that, and then we're going to get ready to close out. Okay. First Peter 1, 13 to 16 tells us this. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, mm. be sober, and rest your hope fully on the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, for that. All right. This is, of course, our, like I said, our memory verse. And it really clarifies uh, for us the importance of having the proper mindset or being in the proper state of mind. All right. This instructs us to be sober. Amen. To be clear-headed when it comes to things. And you know, I love the way this is explained. 
It says to gird up the loins of your mind. Anybody that's been in any kind of physical training, athletics, uh, whatever the case may be, you know your core is where your strength is. That's what you gird up. Your strength comes from your abdomen. The strength in your loins. It says, it, it, he's speaking uh, uh, in, in, in metaphoric terms saying that to gird up, to tighten up your mind. Get your mind right. Okay, gird up the Lord. Listen, you can do better. Get that thing in shape. Strengthen the loins of your mind. Get away from that foolish flabbiness of the world and get into the sub sublime strength of God in our minds. That's what I love about that scripture. Gird up the loins of your mind. It's clarifying for us the importance of the proper mindset, being in the proper state of mind and being sober about it. That, that, that if you're not strong in the mind, it, the devil will put anything past you. You can't afford to, to, to uh, uh, be floating around uh, on hallucinogens or high, or on fentanyl or anything. Gird up the loins of your mind to talking about if you want your behavior to change. Okay? Do all you can in the Lord and then let him work on you, gird you, get you strong in the spirit. That's what he's talking about right here. Proper state of mind. Gird up the loins of your mind. That means be fully in tune with the Lord. Working on it. Are we working on being fully in tune with the Lord when it comes to our behavior? Not faking it. I'm talking about making it with the Lord. Okay? He knows when we're faking and when we're, and, 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 and when we're trying to make it. He knows that. Fully in tune. Fully committed. Fully submitted to the Lord. Okay? Amen. That's Amen. what we're talking about. Conducting ourselves to ascribe and emulate Christ. That takes work, you all. It takes work to want to be like Christ. Quite frankly, sometimes you ain't going to want to be like Christ. Huh? You want to hide and seek Jesus. <laughs> you know? You don't want the sinless lamb. You want a lamb that will let you sin sometime. Right? Sometimes you just want to say, Jesus, close your eyes. <laughs> Come on. Call me that again. You want to, yeah, see, but that's not what he He said, gird up the loins of your mind. It's not easy to walk with Jesus. And this is what it's talking about here. If we want to see our attitudes change. Amen. You know, pull a jack in, a, a jack in the box Jesus. You can't have that. Well, you just do, 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 play, pop out, and you go, oh, Jesus, and you stop doing what you're doing. You want to be with him all the time. All the time. Amen. Amen. But, you know, the devil will have us doing those things. He'll have us fooling ourselves. We deceive ourselves, the scripture says. Okay? So, so this is telling. I love the way the Lord puts this in his word. Be fully in tune with him there. Conducting ourselves. Uh, girding up the loins of our mind. Be sober. Rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. When he comes back, what you know about him now and all of this comes to, comes to mind. As obedient children, said, not conforming to your former lust as, we, as in your ignorance. Got no excuses, you all, if we want to be conformed to Christ. Conducting ourselves to the holiness of him who called us. Am I right? That's what it means. Right, right. So it doesn't get any more serious than that, you all. I think that's a serious call. I think this is a, a serious calling, a serious uh, scripture. So keep that in mind as you go about your day today and for the rest of the week. And uh, before I draw this to a close, at least this segment, I want to remind you all uh, uh, <clears throat> That with all God has offered up to mankind that's, be, that's beneficial and uh, to assist people in, in coming to be renewed in their walks in God's ways, many people still are reluctant. Many, many, many people still just are intent to uh, remain in their own sinful behavior. 
that's a problem. We see it more and more in the world. I've said it before. Even those uh, who profess, uh, profess to be Christians, those uh, who are professing churches, we're seeing a lot of churches, all kinds of denominations doing all kinds of things. I heard something the other day, it was just terrible. I saw a young pastor, it was just terrible. A young sellout pastor, it was just terrible. Mega church with mega numbers. I, 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 that's a whole sermon in itself, we'll talk about that later. But what he said disqualifies him from being in the pulpit what he said, because he's second-guessing Jesus. He's second-guessing God. He said, I would have done it this way. Speaking of same sex and trans sex, he said, I would have done it this way. I don't know why he did it that way. This is a pastor, y'all. This is a pastor. This is a pastor. But it's apparent that many so-called church leaders have put other issues before God, issues like money, issues like numbers, Issues like being accepted, that type of thing. And that's what we're seeing. Uh, many so-called apostles, teachers, uh, they've discovered a motive for compromising. They have a motive for compromising God's word. And you'll see that as we get into this. Actually, there are various reasons why leaders are lost in a state of compromise. And so as we progress in this uh, series, uh, we're going to uncover some things. We're going to see some factors that will hopefully serve to enlighten the public, enlighten people um, who truly want an intimate and rich relationship with the Lord and what it entails. We'll also expose some things because we're called, we're, we're called to expose uh, false, false teaching. We're called to to point out the wolf. We're called to do these things, amen? After all, it's our job to sound the alarm, amen? So this all comes with learning. So all of this and more we'll go into in the next few weeks, God willing. Uh, so make it a point to come back next time when we will continue with uh, behavior according to our Savior. Amen? Amen. Amen. amen? amen. Now, to those of you who don't know the Lord, now would be the time. Now would be the time for you to accept Jesus into your heart. There is no time like the present. Truth of the matter is, we don't know how much time there is left. He could come today. He could come before I finish fin spinach. <coughs> I don't want her to hear that one. I mentioned food. But, but he could come today before I finish. That's what I was trying to say. And uh, he could also call on any one of us, our numbers today. Uh, things happen on Sunday sometimes, you know, and, you know, after, after uh, services. You never know. So if there's anybody who doesn't know the Lord, now would be the time. Uh, if you don't know the Lord, uh, you just have to ask him into your heart in faith. Believe that he is the Lord. And confess your, your sins to him. i like to pray a prayer for you. Uh, right now, those of you that are watching, those of you that will see this broadcast, whatever time of day, Jesus is there. Jesus is on the main line, as we say. He is the only line. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Ask him into your heart. Pray this prayer with me right now and say, Lord, I'm a sinner, but I repent my sins to you right now. I believe that you are God and you died for us and was raised from the dead on the third day. Lord, I can't do it by myself. I need your help. Come into my life and be my Savior. Guide me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Now, if you prayed that prayer, guess what? You are now a child of God. All right? You're, that gets you in the door. It gets you in the club. Okay? Your sins are forgiven you. But now there's work to be done. There's transformation that needs to take place. Okay? You're going to be changed inside out. And it's not going to be easy. It's going to be uncomfortable for you. But whoever heard of having anything worth it without some adversity? This is more than worth it. Amen? Amen. You worked at your job and that wasn't easy. Okay? You faced bullies in your life and that wasn't easy. Okay? 
but you came through it. Now God is going to take you the rest of the way through Jesus Christ. Amen. And he's going to take care of you. All your pent up frustrations, all your secret sins. Yes. Uh, sexual promiscuity. Maybe some of you are going through same sex uh, identity problems. Hand it over to Jesus. I guarantee you, give him a shot and let him work with you sincerely, and you'll come out of that as well. Amen? Amen. There's nothing that he can't do if you give him the opportunity and sincerely stick with him. Amen? Amen. So uh, we're going to pray. Uh, no, we're just going to adjourn today. I'm going to uh, let you all. Do we have something else? No? Okay. Okay. We'll, 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 we'll just... Uh, we're going to let you all have the rest of your day. I'm going to pray out, and then we hope to see you all again next time, and uh, uh, we'll continue in the Lord. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for everyone, Lord, that tuned in. I thank you for everyone that came, Lord. Thank you for the Spirit of Truth Church worldwide crew, Lord, who, who showed up to do your will, Lord. Thank you for bringing us in to, as Pastor and Lisa say, a brick and mortar building, Lord, four walls where we can love on each other and love on your word, Lord God. We thank you for this time. And then I just ask you, Lord, to continue to be with us. Bless those who need uh, finances, Lord. Bless them with jobs, gainful employment. Bless them with better help, Lord God. Give us wisdom, Lord, to uh, do all we can and then hand it off to you because you're going to take care of us better than any doctor ever could. But, Lord, we want to do our part in the discernment that you've given us. So, Lord, as we leave here today, continue to bless us, continue to keep us. We give you all praise and glory. Uh, you are the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. May glory, honor, and blessings, Lord, be to you forever and ever. In Jesus' name, and we all say amen. 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 God bless you, saints. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. Amen.